Alright, let's talk about furries. I admit ignorance in this regard. I'm not a furry, I don't know anyone who is openly a furry, so as far as the culture, conventions, discussions, and so forth, my knowledge on the subject extends to going to conventions and general nerd gatherings, seeing a person in a suit and say, yep, that's a furry. General conception is, I mean, hey man, if you enjoy it and if it's not hurting anybody else, then, you know, knock yourself out, do whatever makes you happy, right? I'm just saying this as an admission that I know next to nothing about history, culture, when it was conceived, and so forth. Which makes this RPG I'm about to review about anthropomorphic animals from the 1980s that have very furry characteristics that you see in modern artwork very interesting. I'll be honest, I didn't think the concept of anthropomorphic animals as a titular selling point for a product would come about until after characters like uh, Lola Bunny from Space Jam and Sonic the Hedgehog's show whenever they became relevant. But it goes to show just how far my ignorance goes on that subject when I find the RPG Albedo, a 1988 RPG that's premise focuses on a science fiction society of anthropomorphic animals with a few suggestive images in the grainy pages. I mean, see? Listen, I didn't even think that the concept of, like, furries and things as, like, titular selling points went beyond, like, the mid-90s, let alone into the late 80s. So, I'm, I'm really flying blind on here as far as just the furry concepts and whatnot are concerned, so I'm going to more or less stick with what I know and just go ahead and review this game based on its merits. So, Albedo came out in 1988, which is unfortunate because it is released in what can best be described as the driest time for role-playing games. Which is really, really weird, considering that this was the time of second edition D&D. D&D was fully hitting its stride in what could best be described as, like, the golden age for D&D, at least. I mean, this was at the height of whenever conservative Christian groups, who really just hate you know, everything fun, and if it comes out of its fun, they hate it. But they were at arms right now against D&D &D as witches work, as the devil's work, and whatnot. It was like six years removed from that awfully, terribly bad movie, Mazes and Monsters, that was starring Tom. Oh, please, God, please, God, do not remember this whenever you all talk about my movies, Hanks. So, it's so weird. It really is that... In the 1980s, whenever Albedo came out, this was at like the height of second edition D&D &D and its popularity, as well as people up in arms, but really beyond D&D, &D, every other book that came out just about had some of the driest looking artwork, pages, and so forth that you could possibly conceive. Open up any book during the 1980s, and they all look about alike. It's like if you popped open a bizarre mix of history and algebra condensed textbooks. I mean, I get it, color print was expensive and probably would have cost an arm and a leg back then to mass produce an RPG which was essentially a very niche market whenever you think of the grand scheme of things. But I figure that you could put a little bit something else that could make it just look a little bit more appealing whenever you open the book besides charts after charts after maybe one or two grainy black and white images and more and more charts. I'm really surprised that gamers from the 80s were able to continue to pass on these things to future generations. I figure that maybe they would have died of boredom at this point after I looked through some of them. I mean, or maybe I'm just privileged to be the ones that grew up in the 2000s whenever RPGs are now fully illustrated, beautiful pieces of artwork in each page. Who knows? It is quick to see that Albedo is a game sold on a gimmick and made in a time when creators didn't quite have the whole system thing down yet. This was the time when Leading Edge was finding its stride, so the idea of mathematic accuracy still took precedence over simplicity and innovation. 
Albedo's only serious distinguishing characteristic is the fact that it is sold on a premise of anthropomorphic animals as the characters. Beyond that, the story itself is extremely cookie-cutter science fiction, for especially for the 1980s. And the system is just needlessly complex and just seems to be a really badly translated D&D clone. Yes, I'm holding Albedo to current standards when it comes to the blend of story and system, because I feel the blend is universal. No matter what year, no matter what decade, you need to have a good blend of story and system. It's the whole reason that D&D is such a giant cultural marvel that it is. This was during a time when a lot of systems were painfully complex, as opposed to trying to simplify to enjoy the storyline experience. But even for the time, Albedo is a system that factors in half numbers, multiplication, division, for purposes of rolling a few dice with a character sheet that is three pages long, for a game where it should only be one or half a page at most. The game even factors in recoil from weapons and wound damage that often seems nice in theory whenever you're creating a game, but tends to be bulky in the process and ultimately unnecessary. Story-wise, like I said, there's not much there. Anthropomorphic animals were left away by humans to kind of grow up on their own, and the artwork really takes a serious Star Wars type of look to it. It's very Star Wars down to just about every single section, as far as, like, generic science fiction is concerned. So whenever it even comes to story-wise, there's not much really there to sell you on it either. You're either here for the furries, or you ain't here at all. The game is ultimately a gimmick. It is a cookie-cutter science fiction story mixed in with a D&D inspired yet more complicated dice system that is sold primarily on the fact that it is a game based on a comic magazine about furry-like characters. At the end of the day, it just isn't really worth talking about to any more great extent. So yeah, this one kind of goes without saying that this game is a miss. I mean, if you're like really big into furries and you want like a game focusing on anthropomorphic animals, you might find it enjoyable, but I can guarantee you'll find more modern, better games out there than this one. Uh, if you really want to get a kind of a look of the way that 1980s RPGs looks, I guarantee you could find this thing online for free, so you could at least browse through and see what the not main games look like. But beyond that, there's no reason to pick it up. So thank you all so much for watching, and please like and subscribe for more. And also, please go to my Patreon, patreon.com slash Tanner Bivens, and become my patron, and to continue to support me in that way too. Thank you all so much, and I was looking forward to talking to you next time.